Denmark, which is a world leader in wind energy, is not the first country that springs to mind when it comes to solar energy. But the tiny island of Aero in the south of the kingdom is determined to prove that harnessing the power of the sun is possible, even in this windswept region of northern Europe. This is the town of Marstal. With its church, wooden houses and football field, it looks like any other small town in Denmark. But there's one big difference. Almost all the households get their domestic hot water and part of their heating needs from a solar energy plant on the outskirts of town. With a total of over 18,000 square meters of panels, Marstal is the world's largest solar thermal plant. The principle of this technology is simple. The sun warms up the large black surfaces of the solar panels, which in turn heat the water that's piped through them. When it reaches 70 degrees, the hot water is then stored in a tank before it's pumped directly to the town's houses. From May until September, the plant produces 100% of Marstal's hot water, while over the course of the year it provides a third of the town's total heating. The benefits are huge. Each year, the solar thermal system saves the need to incinerate 9,000 litres of waste oil. The site has even become something of a tourist attraction. Plant manager Leo Holm believes important lessons can be learned from the experiment that began over a decade ago on this remote island in the Baltic Sea. When we can produce solar energy in Denmark, we can produce solar energy all over in Europe, so this will be no problem. So I hope more uh, people will install solar panels all over in Europe so we can get rid of all the oil and save our world for CO2 emission. Solar energy is popular on the island of Iro because it's proved cheap, clean and reliable. Steen Felter is a retired librarian who installed solar-powered underfloor heating when he restored his house. To us, it's, a, it's an advantage because uh, this tiny room, uh, if I had to have a central heating here uh, with fuel, I couldn't have this. And I have an extra kitchen, you could, might say. So uh, we have no smell from fuel oil. It's safe. We, have had, we haven't had one uh, interruption. So... It's a little contribution to less pollution. Many of the solar panels used on IRO are produced in this factory in Kolga, outside the Danish capital Copenhagen. There's a heavy demand for these panels now because the market for solar thermal energy in Europe is booming. Over two million European families directly benefit from sustainable heating and cooling, and sales of solar systems are growing by almost 50% a year. For factory owner Emmanuel Bender, the advantages of solar thermal are clear. If you can achieve heat with uh, solar energy, you are not taking anything from nowhere. You, you use the energy from the sun today, and tomorrow when you have the shower, you deliver again the energy to the surroundings. Bender practices what he preaches. The solar panels on his roof produce 3,000 liters of hot water, ample for a family of five. With thick walls, underground heating and a wood stove, 85% of this house's heating and hot water comes from clean sources. Solar heated buildings are commonplace in Koga. The solar panels on this apartment block provide enough heating for 144 families, while this campsite gets all its hot water from the sun's rays. But such systems still only account for a tiny percentage of the EU's total energy consumption that's gobbled up by heating and cooling. So what changes are needed to realize solar thermal's full potential? Uwe Trenkner is Secretary General of the European Solar Thermal Industry Federation. The most important thing for us would be that, that uh, new buildings are equipped with solar thermal from the beginning. Because then it's the most economical point to, to install them and you just foresee them when you build the building. And uh, then these buildings will stand for 50, 100, sometimes even longer. And it just does not make sense to us to, to build buildings on, still based on fossil fuels when everybody knows they are bad in terms of environment, but also in terms of our dependence on oil and gas. Solar panels and storage tanks are a common sight in southern Europe. These days, solar domestic hot water systems are more discreet, but there will be a lot more of them on roofs in years to come. In 2006, the Spanish government passed a law requiring the installation of solar thermal panels in all new buildings. The effect has been a dramatic rise in capacity. The panels on this new apartment block in Seville will provide heating and cooling for 88 flats, bringing financial and environmental benefits to tenants. Aparte de, del ahorro que tiene cada vecino en la su factura, ahorro económico, 
que le sale más económica su agua caliente, hasta un 80%, ese vecino está dejando de emitir toneladas de CO2, de gases contaminantes, al medio ambiente. Pues está dejando de emitir una cantidad equivalente al 80-90% de lo que emite una familia normal. Roughly 90% of the solar thermal market in the EU is in the residential sector. This second home, nestled in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada in Andalucía, is typical of the small-scale systems found all over Europe. The 800-liter boiler produces enough water for the needs of 12 people and even runs on olive waste when the sun isn't shining. The technician who installed the system believes the two to three thousand euro investment in solar technology made by the owners is money well spent. Es una inversión inicial que luego tiene su ahorro y su, y su satisfacción de ser una energía no contaminante, una energía limpia y pro, producir tú mismo el, el agua que consumes. Y esto tiene también una importancia que se puede traducir en un coste económico también, ¿no? On a somewhat more grandiose scale is this solar thermal tower plant near Seville, which is the first of its kind in the world. Here, 624 automatically adjustable panels concentrate the sun's rays on a solar receiver 100 meters up. The receiver harnesses this energy to produce steam, which in turn feeds a turbine to make electricity. When completed, this complex will produce enough electricity to power most of the homes in Seville. This will prevent the emission of 600,000 tons of carbon dioxide a year, helping both Spain and the European Union to meet their greenhouse gas reduction targets. The solar industry, which employs over 20,000 people in Europe, is also a precious source of jobs in southern Spain. Francisco Bas Jiménez is director general of the Andalucía Energy Agency. Tenemos muy claro que las energías renovables en general y la energía solar en particular son unas grandes generadoras de riqueza y de empleo. Y por supuesto, la generación de empleo desde las energías renovables es muy superior a la que crean las energías convencionales. The European Commission's Sustainable Energy Europe campaign promotes wider use of solar thermal energy, which is clean, inexhaustible, and immediately available for all potential consumers. It could also contribute to the European Union's objective to cover 20% of its energy consumption from renewable sources by the year 2020.